Welcome to Awake to Joy. Hi, Annette. Hello. Today you wanted to talk about our blind side. Yes, with those blind spots. I think we all That's have awesome. them. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and they're basically an area where we're lacking insight or awareness on something that's going on in our life. Yeah. A simple <laughs> example would be, there's something on the back of my head. Well, right now I wouldn't be able to see it. And if it's not moving and if it's just stuck there, whatever it is, I wouldn't know it's in my blind spot. I can't see it. Yep. That's a physical, that's a yep. physical seeing it. And what we're talking about is more relational related, working with other people, folks around you, or even our own blind spot of our behavior, things that we are doing that are God's best. <laughs> and so we're blind to those things. Sometimes until the Holy Spirit maybe uses somebody else to bring it to our attention, and or he just even reveals it to us while we're in a conversation with him. Yes, that's happened quite a bit. <laughs> you could be reading a scripture and go, oh, huh? <laughs> really? You know, I actually have a story about a blind spot. Hmm. It may not be what we fully talk about today, but definitely a, Whoa, where did that come from moment? And it was actually, we were both in Washington at the time. And you came knocking on my door and you said, we need to go to the beach. God's telling me I'm supposed to take you to the beach. I don't know if you remember that. Or not. That was and a long a, time ago. Yes, we did a few going to the beach and just having our times alone with the Lord there. But this particular one, um, you left me with a piece of chalk and said, I don't know what you're supposed to be doing with this. <laughs> and you walked away. And he just said, have your time with God. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm here. Don't know what you want. And just started having this conversation with God. But I had no idea what that conversation was going to end up being about. And so I thought, ooh, there's all these rocks around me. What am I supposed to do with the chalk? And I just decided to start writing things on it. And what it came out to be was not just rocks I was writing words on, but then there was this huge piece of driftwood I wrote something on. And those things that I was writing were the things I was trying to control, the things I was trying to hold on to and not release to God. And that big piece of driftwood that I wrote with chalk, it was, so this was my aha moment where God was speaking to me, said, Renee, you're trying to be savior to your children. You were trying to be the protector of your kids and not trust me to be the bigger protector of your kids. And that was one of those moments where I didn't see it, the tag on the back, you know, <laughs> but God revealed to me, I, that was a blind spot um, that the, my actions and the way I was doing things, I was over protecting my kids and not allowing them to go out into the world and experience. And, and they were know, quite they were almost ready to leave the nest they let's put it that way in high school yeah they were yeah it was like they were seniors in high school something like that and so the backstory of that was um when isaiah was little my oldest it was like planted in my heart that i already knew he was supposed to leave the nest and be this explorer to be a lover of the world to be the lover of you know different just nationalities and diversity and as soon as I learned that, it was like, oh, no, I'm keeping my kid close. You know, I'm the mama that wants my kid to live next door. You know, why would I go and buy a globe? Why would I buy anything or a map that would encourage my son to explore? And so I had this attitude towards God of this knowledge I had that was not going to happen. I'm not going to encourage it. So I never bought the map, never bought the globe until... I had a coming to Jesus moment where I needed to buy that globe, put it in my house and begin the releasing of my kids of what God wanted to do in them. But I was trying to be savior. I was trying to be protector. I was trying to hold them close. Anyway, there's a little bit of that. <laughs> I 
Oh, you got to finish a story of what you actually were told to do with those items. You well, wrote all those things on the rocks and you wrote it on the driftwood. <clears throat> and I came yeah. up and you sounded so settled and it was like, okay, now this is what you got to do with them. And yeah. that was the tougher part. <laughs> the tougher part was to release those things that I had held so dear. All those things that were important to me was God asking me, trust me, release it. Stop trying to be such a controller. There's a lot of other things that were said in it, but the action that I had to do was take one by one and throw them back into the ocean. And as I threw it into the ocean, it was, I give it to you, Lord. I'm going to trust you, Lord. And as somebody who's been abused, I will just say this, it's hard to trust. So even my trust of God, I realized that was a blind spot. I wasn't trusting God in these areas that he could be moving in. And that, so I threw all of the rocks that I had, I had packed around me because I had a couple hours of writing on rocks. But that big driftwood that had my boy's name on it, yeah. it was, shoot, Lord. Okay, you revealed this blind spot, but now you're asking me to trust you with them. And I thought I already had all my life, but then it kind of like went backwards and showed me that you resisted here, you resisted here, you resisted here. It's, Trust me, release them. I will do good for them. <laughs> and it was a, that was a hard moment to take. And so I picked up that thing. I'm like, all right, Lord, <laughs> I know I can trust you. And I threw it into the water and there was a relief that came. I didn't have to be in control, that God was greater. God was bigger. I had to repent and all that too. I will be honest, there was a time of repenting and reconciling back with God because I didn't trust him. I limited him and his movement in my life. But things have been very different since that day. And I'm very grateful. So I'm still learning. We all are. <laughs> yeah. But that was a huge moment for me. Didn't realize I was stepping in, trying to play savior. And didn't realize my blind spot till God pointed it out. So. Well, there's the Jahari window. Anybody can Google that. And there's the window of what you and I know, what you could see and what I could see. There's the window of what I could see, but nobody else can see. So it might be something private I have in my life that you don't know about or whatever, but God sees it. I see it. It's in my life. Then there's the blind spot, which I can't see, but God can see. And in that window, it's so important to go, okay, well, I'm not going to worry about it. If God wants to show me, then I'll ask him to show me. And if he's going to show me, there you go. So I guess it always comes back to that, asking God, do I have a blind spot? Or has somebody told me I have a blind spot? Have you actually had somebody come up to me and let me know I'm blind in an area and I'm missing it and you're wanting me to pay attention? And you might have forgotten that somebody said something to you just off the cuffs and you just didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. But when you go to God and, and spend time with him and say, Bring it to my attention. Where, where is it that I have these blind spots so I can work on them? But don't worry about ones that he hasn't shown you or have not come to your attention in God's timing. It's not mm -hmm. something for you to be obsessed about, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't be obsessed. But when somebody brings to you, hey, I noticed, I can't say I've always been receptive to it. It might not be the most wonderful thing to know that, uh, let's say you heard a whole bunch of people's feelings at a meeting and somebody at the end of the meeting, not during the meeting, because you just kept stepping on people's toes the whole meeting. At the end of the meeting, they come up to you and go, Renee, do you realize? And I know you, you'd be going, what? I had no idea. And you would feel terrible about it. That would be hard to hear. It'd be, you'd be in tears. I know you, you'd be in tears because it was something you didn't intend to do. 
Right. But at the same time, how thankful to know that somebody was told you. It'd be nicer if they told you sooner, but maybe you weren't getting the hints. Maybe you weren't getting the hints from everybody. But again, we could be so blind. Yeah, yeah. We've been caught many a times that way. And it is hurtful. I'm just going to say, I'm sensitive. I remember those times where I've been told I've stepped on somebody's feet because I stepped up when no one else had stepped up. So I thought, let's get it in order. Let's get her done. And <laughs> then I found out later, wow, you didn't ask this person their opinion. You did not this, you did that. And wasn't even thinking those things at the time. I was just trying to solve something right, like, right. to get in and solve. But yeah, I can step on toes and not until somebody says something. Just another example of blind spots and to be teachable. Yes. <laughs> important to, to do that. <laughs> you know, it's hard because it involves our motives. So let's say at this pretend meeting I've made up that you stepped on all these people's toes and somebody tells you afterwards, you, you were, you're thinking in the back of your mind, my motive was pure, right? wasn't it? My motive was trying to help you guys clean up this mess. Nobody was stepping forward. So I decided to step forward and and so in your mind, your motives were pure, but it caused pain for people and you just were so unaware of it. And it leaves this conflict going on inside of you. And so you have to decide where to put the pieces, if that makes sense afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And not just go, well, that's it. I'll never, vol I'll never step up again. That's, that's not it. True. And we can be susceptible to that attitude. Because it is, it can, we can receive it very hurtful when somebody points out a blind spot. So if we're not teachable or moldable, we can have a hard heart in regards to it and shut down and choose not to support a gift that we have, you know? Be I, don't, I don't think that's what God intended. No. No, but sometimes that is a reaction that some of us have when a blind spot is pointed out. We're like, no, and then you shut it down and you're not teachable. And then that person never brings anything up again. Or that person, you there's a break in the relationship because you think they're telling you non-truth. And I think that's so a perfect okay. example with couples because don't you know certain things that will just irritate your husband or whatever, that type of thing, where... Um, my husband will go, gosh, if I mention that to her, she's not going to be very happy about it or whatever it is. And we got to make sure we stay supple and we not end up in that place type situation. As Eddie calls it, not that. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that we don't respond with. Right. Right away. Yeah. 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 Hmm. An open heart, open ears. Absolutely. I feel like there's a lot more to this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the blind side is a blind side, but let's keep this part short and maybe we could do a part B. I like that idea. All right. Talk to you soon. <laughs>